In this video, I want to talk about how to fix HPA access dysfunction. We will look at all the important players like your nervous system, adrenal glands and hormones and what you need to do to bring them back into balance. As you will see, this isn't just about cutting out stress. It involves a deeper understanding of your body's systems, especially the hormones and glands responsible for handling stress. To get started, let's quickly recap what HPA axis dysfunction is. Again, the HPA axis stands for the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, which is a system that controls your body's response to stress. Like I explained in my introduction video on the HPA axis, you can think of it as the communication network between all the players involved in your stress response. So different parts of your brain, as well as your adrenal glands. The hypothalamus triggers your pituitary gland, which then sends signals to your adrenal glands to produce certain hormones. When everything works smoothly, this system keeps you alert and ready to handle stressful situations. But when the system gets overworked, like when you're under constant chronic stress, it can break down. That's what we call HPA axis dysfunction or HPA axis dysregulation. When the system gets out of balance, you can suffer from chronically elevated stress hormones, or if it's completely overworked, you also see chronically low stress hormone levels. This leaves you feeling exhausted, anxious, and unable to recover even from the smallest stressors. You then feel like you're in a never-ending cycle of burnout and your body is no longer capable of adapting to stress in a healthy way. You could also find yourself getting sick more often since cortisol helps regulate immune function. On top of that, there can be very strange symptoms like tense muscles, headaches and impaired digestion, which are all related to an imbalanced stress response. Basically, you feel stuck in a state of constant alarm even when there's no immediate threat. Over time, this can lead to chronic anxiety, panic attacks, and even symptoms of depression. The symptoms of HPA axis dysfunction are very similar to other conditions that you might encounter in the holistic health field, like adrenal fatigue, sympathetic dominance, and nervous system dysregulation. The reason for this is very simple. All of these systems, so your brain, your nervous system, your adrenal glands, and your stress hormones work together. In that sense, looking at the HPA axis is really like looking at the whole team instead of its individual players. So this then takes me to the main part of this video. How do you fix HPA axis dysfunction? I always like to tackle health issues that are related to low energy and chronic fatigue in a four step process that looks like this. One, reducing stress to relax your body and nervous system. 2. Improving your nutrition and fixing nutrient deficiencies. 3. Working on actively detoxing pollutants and chemicals. And 4. Reducing toxin exposure to avoid reaccumulation. We can use this same framework by slightly adapting it to the needs of your HPA axis. It would then look something like this. For step 1, you focus on calming down your hypothalamus and pituitary gland. For step 2, you work on replenishing nutrients necessary for your adrenal glands. For step three, you improve your overall detox and step four stays mostly the same. So as you can see, we will slightly adapt steps one and two and steps three and four stay mostly the same. Great, let's now do this and go through them one by one. One, calming down your hypothalamus and pituitary gland. The first step in healing HPA axis dysfunction is managing your stress levels and calming your nervous system. One of the key problems we often encounter is sympathetic dominance, where your fight or flight response, so the sympathetic branch of your nervous system, is constantly active. This keeps your body in a state of alertness and makes it hard to relax and recover. To counter this, you need to focus on strengthening the parasympathetic nervous system, which is the counterpart to the sympathetic nervous system. It is responsible for rest, relaxation, and when it gets activated, it will automatically also calm down your hypothalamus and pituitary gland. To achieve parasympathetic activation, you can start by including active relaxation techniques into your daily routine. Active relaxation is all about intentionally reducing your level of agitation. This can involve slowing your breathing, relaxing your muscles, controlling your thoughts, or some combination of all of them. So, whereas watching TV is passive relaxation, 
Active relaxation will engage your mind and body somewhat. Things like meditation, deep breathing, and yoga are all proven to activate the parasympathetic nervous system and will encourage your body to shift into a more relaxed state. Even super simple activities like walking in nature or practicing gratitude can do this to some extent. Next to active relaxation, you will also need to replenish calming nutrients that positively influence your hypothalamus and pituitary gland. These are usually low in people with an overactive nervous system. They include nutrients like magnesium, calcium, GABA, zinc, and lithium. For example, magnesium relaxes the muscles and nervous system and helps block adrenaline and glutamate, which are both excitatory neurotransmitters. On top of that, it also increases the function of GABA, which is a neurotransmitter itself that can also be supplemented. It is the main inhibitory neurotransmitter in the nervous system, so it acts against adrenaline, for example, and is a natural break to stress. When GABA binds to its receptors, it makes it harder for these neurons to be stimulated. This helps calm down your body and lowers the effect excitatory neurotransmitters like adrenaline have on you. Once you've begun calming down your brain and nervous system, the next step is to look at your adrenals. Most people with HPA axis dysfunction have underperforming adrenals that need to be strengthened. I talk about this in a different video, but the key nutrients here are vitamin C, sodium, and potassium. Vitamin C is important because adrenal glands need it for healthy functioning. They actually have a higher vitamin C concentration than almost any other organ in your body. During times of stress, vitamin C levels can become depleted, so it's important to make sure you're getting enough of it. Try to get most of your vitamin C through a diet high in vegetables and fruit, but supplements can also help. Another important nutrient for adrenal function is sodium. If you're dealing with HPA axis dysfunction, you might notice that you're craving salty foods. This is because your weak adrenals don't produce enough aldosterone, which is a hormone needed to retain sodium in the body. Adding natural sources of sodium like sea salt can definitely help here. And then we have potassium, which is also essential for adrenal health because it helps regulate fluid balance, nerve signaling, and muscle contractions. It works together with sodium, and the more sodium you consume, the more potassium you need. Potassium-rich foods also include most vegetables and fruits, like in the case of vitamin C. Supplements can also be an option, but be careful here, because they're only safe in low doses. Great! Once you have your hypothalamus, pituitary gland, and adrenals covered, the steps 3 and 4 are really only lifestyle measures that help improve your overall health. They're all about reducing toxins and eliminating hidden stimulants. Chronic exposure to toxins, hidden stimulants, and other stressors can keep your HPA axis in a state of overdrive, even if you don't have any nutrient deficiencies and already practice active relaxation. So it's important to minimize these as much as possible. Because both toxin reduction and active elimination, so toxin detox, are pretty big subjects in and of themselves, I will link videos where they are discussed in more detail. Otherwise, this video would get way too long. Basically, what you want to achieve is to reduce your overall load of hidden stimulants and hidden inflammatory agents, like toxic metals and chronic infections. They all trigger your stress response and add to the existing HPA axis dysfunction. Great, to wrap up this video, let me say one thing again. Even though healing HPA axis dysfunction isn't a quick fix, it can definitely be done. It's basically a process of healing and restoring balance to your whole stress response system. By practicing active relaxation, supporting your nervous system, nourishing your adrenals, and eliminating hidden stressors, you can rebuild your resilience to stress and get back to feeling your best. Always start by making small changes and give your body the time it needs to recover. This isn't a race and you will have to have some patience.